this response representation for continuous time LTA system. Any arbitrary continuous time signal x of t can be expressed as weighted superposition of time shifted impulses that is x of t is equal to integration of minus infinity to plus infinity x of tau into del of t minus tau into d tau. Now let us consider an LTA system LTA system T is the operator of the system X of T is the input whereas Y of T is the output Y of T equals to that is x of t of sorry t of t of x of t where operation is done on the input signal y of t equals to t of x of t is expressed as weighted superposition of time shifted impulses that is integral of minus infinity to plus infinity x of tau into del of t minus tau into t tau so in input signal is constant operation is done on the time shifted impulses that is integral of minus infinity to plus infinity x of tau t of del of t minus tau into d tau since the input signal here is del of t minus tau its output is h of t minus tau that is integral of minus infinity plus infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau into d tau this is the output of an LTA system this is represented as x of t equals to y of t equals sorry y of t equals to x of t that is convolved with h of t it is also known as convolution integral convolution integral this is used to find the response or output of an LTA system when two signals are linearly convolved that is x of t and the impulse response h of t now let us take one example consider an LTA system with the impulse response h of t equals to u of t and the input signal x of t equals to e to the power of minus a t into u of t where a is greater than 0 let us find out the output y of t we know that y of t is equal to x of t linearly convolved with h of t its formula is y of t is equal to integral of minus infinity to plus infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau into d tau that is y of t is equal to integral of minus infinity to plus infinity whereas x of tau is u of tau sorry x of t is e to the power of minus a t into u of t that is x of tau is e to the power of minus a tau into u of tau where h of t minus tau is u of t minus tau into d tau that is y of t is equal to so again I will write this integral of minus infinity plus infinity e to the power of minus a tau into u of tau into u of t minus tau into d tau you have two signals here this is the input signal this is the impulse response 
this is a fixed signal where this is a moving signal based on the value of t u of t minus tau is a moving signal to get a non zero value output y of t u of t minus tau should come in the range of the first signal that is e to the power of minus a tau into u of tau here first let us draw this signal that is u e to the power of minus a tau is it comes like this this is a decaying exponential signal this is t this is zero this is e to the power of minus tau where u of t is this is a unit step function it exists from zero to infinity this is u of tau when these two signals are multiplied the resulting signal here is input signal is this, this is the decaying exponent signal its value is 1 and t is 0 this is input signal this is nothing but e to the power of minus e t into u of t or the same as e to the power of minus a tau into u of tau second signal should come in this range that is 0 to infinity to have a non-zero value to fix the integration limits here we should consider the first signal as well as second signal from the first signal we will get the lower limit of the integration from the second signal we will get the upper limit of the integration that is u of tau is equal to 1 when tau is greater than or equal to 0 0 when tau is less than Next, u of t minus tau is equal to 1 when t minus tau is greater than or equal to 0. That is nothing but t minus t is, t is greater than or equal to tau where tau is less than or equal to t. From these two, conditions you can conclude that tau should not be less than 0 and tau should not be greater than t. That means integration limits are 0 to t. That is y of t equals to integration of 0 to t e to the power of minus a tau into u of tau into u of t minus tau into d tau. Now, based on the condition of the t, let us check that output is 0 or non-zero value. In this case, let us consider the three cases here. That is what we have here is y of t is equal to integration of 0 to t e to the power of minus a tau u of tau into u of t minus tau. We know that first signal is exist in the range of 0 to infinity. This is t, this is the x of t, this is 0. Now, let us check the second range of second signal. That is, in this case, we will consider three cases. Case number 1, when t is 0, that is, it will become u of minus tau. Whereas u of minus tau comes in the range of 0 to minus infinity. This is the u of minus tau. When these two signals are multiplied, we will get a non-zero value because at 0 the multiplication is possible. Less than 0 multiplication is not possible. Greater than 0 multiplication is not possible. The multiplication is possible only at 0. Then I can conclude that y of t is not equal to 0 when t is 0. Similarly, consider the case number 2 when t is less than 0. For example, let us take that t is equal to minus 1. When t is equal to minus 1, you will get second signal is u of minus 1 minus tau. u of minus 1 minus tau where it comes, that is you can write it as an u of minus tau minus 1. That is, it comes in the range of
first let us take u of p minus 1 that is it goes like this this is the u of tau minus 1 then you take its reflection it comes in this range that is minus 1 to minus infinity this is the u of minus 1 minus tau when you see this when t is less than 0 signal is uh, the two when, is, when t is minus 1 signal comes in the range of minus 1 to minus infinity when this signal is multiplies with the input signal x of t output y of t is equal to 0 because both are not overlapping here similarly if i take t is equal to minus 2 that is second signal comes in the range of minus 2 to minus infinity that is u of minus 2 to minus 2 then also the multiplication is possible from this i can conclude that when when t is less than 0 output y of t is equal to 0 this is very important similarly i'll take the third condition case number 3 when t is greater than 0 for example i'll take t is equal to 1 if i take t is equal to 1 i'll get u of 1 minus tau that is nothing but u of minus tau plus 1 we have this is the u of tau plus 1 means signal is shifted to the left hand side by 1 unit this is u of tau plus 1 then you take its reflection signal comes in the range of minus plus 1 to minus infinity this is the u of minus tau plus 1 that means here when t is greater than 0 second signal u of t minus tau but when t is equal to 1 it comes from 1 to minus infinity when the multiplication is possible with the first signal that is it multiplies up to 1 similarly if i take t is equal to 2 it becomes that is when t is equal to 2 you will get that is u of minus tau plus 2 the signal comes in the range of it is 2 to minus infinity this is u of minus tau plus 2 or 2 minus tau then also multiplication is possible it multiplies up to t that means we can conclude that y of t is not equal to 0 when t is greater than 0 from these three cases case 1 case 2 and case 3 we can conclude that output exists only when t is greater than or equal to 0 from three cases we can say that y of t is equal to 0 when t is less than 0 y of t is not equal to 0 when t is greater than or equal to 0 then we can find its output when t is greater than or equal to 0 when t is greater than or equal to 0 y of t is equal to integration of 0 to t e to the power of minus a tau u of tau value is 1 u of t minus tau value is also 1 integrate with respect to d tau this is e to the power of minus a tau divided by minus a 0 to t this can be written as y of t is equal to equals to that is 1 divided by 1 minus a is outside 
and write e to the power of minus 80 minus 1. This can be written as 1 minus e to the power of minus 80 whole divided by a. This is the output of a plus 1. That is convolution of two signals. Signals are h of t is equal to u of t and input signal x of t is equal to e to the power of minus 80 into u of t. Now let us draw its output. That is x-axis is t, y-axis is the output signal y of t. That is, when t is 0, you will get e to the power of 0 value. Which is 1, 1 minus 1, it will become 0, 0 by a is it will become 0. It starts from 0. As t increases, e to the power of minus value it becomes it tends to zero that means maximum value of y of t is 1 by a and when you draw this signal it looks like this at higher values of t when t goes towards positive infinity the maximum value of output signal is 1 divided by This completes this problem.